Hey, our own Rabinowitz here for Grayscale Gorilla, and in this video, I'll show you how to add dirt and scratches to your 3D objects in Cinema 4D and Redshift, even if they already have complex materials applied to them. Now, I'll be using the Grayscale Gorilla Plus library of materials and textures, but you don't need them to do this. You can use your own materials, your own textures, whatever. I'm just using these materials because I've got them right here, and they really help things look great fast, as you'll see. So let's get to it. So here I am in Cinema 4D and I've got a nice background and a really shiny logo and I really want to mess that stuff up. Get the background nice and dirty, get the logo nice and dirty. And if you look at the background, I'm using this material called Steel Painted 01. And this material already has little bits of dirt and whatnot. And if I really want to mess this stuff up, let me just double click and open it so we can take a look. You can see that when we open up the shader graph, we're going to see that this material has a lot of different textures contributing to the makeup of the look. And basically what's happening is that all the channels that I might use to add some damage to this wall, they're being used by other textures. And sure, there are ways of adding in textures and then using some of the tools you can find here to mix them up together. But if you're not an expert in shaders or any of these tools, it can be complicated. But thankfully, the latest version of Redshift includes a solution that makes this super easy. And of course, I'm talking about Stacked Materials. Stacked Materials is a new feature in Redshift that makes it really easy to layer materials one on top of the other using transparency to let some of the material show through to the material below it. So let's look at how to use that. Well, I'm gonna add in this material here called Iron Cast. Let me just find that Iron Cast right here. I'm gonna add it in and then I'm gonna double click on this and we're gonna open up the shader graph and we're gonna be looking at particularly right here, but let's just jump over to the textures. Here in my textures, I have a bunch of different surface imperfections that are part of the Grayscale Gorilla Library. These are really cool. Now, you don't need to be using them for this project. You could use any materials you find on the internet. You can search up scratch marks and things like that and use those. I'm using them because I really love them. They look awesome. The challenge for me in using these materials has always been that, again, like I showed you before, if you're trying to apply them to a complex material, it's a little hard to do. So I wasn't able to use these as much as I wanted to. But now with this new feature of stack materials, it's really easy. So here's what I'm going to do. Again, we pull out here. We can see that there's a lot of different things contributing to the makeup of this material. And I'm just going to grab, let's go with scratches 49 right here. I'm going to drag this in over here. And then I'm going to take it from the output and I'm going to drag it over to the input for the redshift material right here. And I'm going to choose overall and I'm going to choose opacity color. And once I do that, what will happen is it's going to use the black and white image right here as a transparency mat. So anything that's white will show up and anything that's black will be invisible. You can see that right here. Let me close this out. And now what I'll do is I'll take this material and I'm going to drop it onto my background. You can do this a couple of ways. One of them is to drop it right onto the background, this plane that I'm working with here, or you can come over to here and drop it on the plane right here. But what you don't want to do is drop it on top of the material that's already there. That will replace it. But if I drop it over here like this, now it's been added. That is a very dirty background. But you know what? I want to scale the material a little bit. It's a little too much uh, right now. It's a little too big. So let me just tile it a little more. I'll hit two, two like that. And I think that's looking really great. Of course, now our logo is exceptionally pristine. Whatever damage happened to this wall, this logo has somehow escaped but not for long. So I'm gonna jump back into my materials here and I'm going to reuse the same material right here, this yellow material. So I can really duplicate this, but I'm just gonna grab it from here and drop it back in. Let's just get back to it right there. I'll drop it over here and we're gonna do the same kind of thing. Um, I'm gonna double click and then I wanna talk about something here. So right now we're looking at the shader graph, but some of your materials might not be using the shader graph they might be using the node editor. So what I'll do is I'm gonna close this out and I'm gonna convert this material, this new one right here, and I'm going to choose Redshift, Materials, Tools, Convert and Replace with Nodes. And you don't need to do this conversion. I just wanted to show you what things might look like in the node editor if you came across it doing this kind of thing. Now, you may be seeing some messy stuff happening right here. Ignore that, that is just my GPU competing with my screen capture. That'll all get fixed in a moment. But let's double click on this new material that we've just created and brought in and changed. And you can see that we've got this much more visual representation of all the pieces that are contributing to the material itself. This is our node editor. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit, pan up, 
And the one we want to pay attention to here is our Redshift material. And what I'm going to do is again, go back into my textures here. I'm going to go to the top here and I'm going to choose Scratches 04. And one other thing I need to do is just scroll down the overall so we can see the opacity connector right here. And I'll take it from the output of the texture and I'll put it into the input on the material for opacity. And we will get the same result of a partially transparent image. Again, looking like the other one, only this one is yellow. All right, so let's close that out. And then let's apply this material. So I'll take the steel painted and I'll drop it right onto my logo. And I think that's looking pretty good. Let's just uh, zoom in here. Let me change this to original size and zoom in. So here's the thing. This does look pretty good, but there may be a little bit too much of this dirt on here that I don't want to have there. And normally to fix that, we'd probably have to go back into this original texture image and alter that in some way. However, there is an easy fix for this in this case, if you're willing to be a little creative. So I am going to double click on the material, bring it up again in the node editor, and I'm going to select my texture that's being used to drive the transparency. Close that out. And you can see if we scroll down just a little bit, we've got this thing here called custom gamma. And this will allow us to push the grays that are somewhere between the blacks and the whites to push them in one direction or another. So that can add to the transparency or take away from it. So if I crank this up really high, then what's gonna happen is most of this dirt is gonna disappear. So you can see that happening. Now, if I crank it in the opposite direction all the way down, we can see that it's full of a lot of dirt. That's a little too much for me. I'm gonna set it to 1.2 and call it a day. And I think that is looking much better. Yeah, looks pretty good. Anyway, there's lots you can do with stack materials like adding decals or adding glass on another material. And I encourage you to play around and have fun. As always, I hope that this helps you in your work. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for Grayscale Gorilla. I'll see you soon.